Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Carrie Roldan Show, where we spend 30 minutes or so per week having conversations that matter to the entrepreneur's body, mind, and business. I'm your host, Carrie Roldan, and I created this show because I have stumbled and I continue to on my entrepreneurial journey because the road to success thus far has been full of potholes, detours, dead ends, not to mention self-doubt, fear, worry, debt, marital tension, and personal struggle. And I wanted to share what I continue to learn on my journey in the hopes that it will help you guys too. Because online entrepreneurhood can be a lonely place, and I'm on a mission to help us connect to each other and to the people and resources that we need to thrive in our businesses. And that's why I'm so excited about today. You may notice it looks a little different than usual. I have all these amazing women with me. These women, these four women right here, are my own, my very own personal intuitive super panel. <laughs> um, and so I want to talk to you about the topic for today because I'm hoping to make this a regular show that once a month I'm going to have on these intuitive super women to talk about topics that are important in our lives and businesses that maybe we don't get out there in like the mainstream business world. So today's topic is one that is so important to those of us heart-centered uh, women entrepreneurs, and it is entrepreneurial ADD. <laughs> How and when to know what to do when you get bombarded with a bunch of creative ideas or a bunch of new ideas, um, or you get intuitive nudges that don't seem to make any sense based on your current focus. Um, I've got this intuitive super panel here to help us with that because I don't know about you, but I know every one of us here deals with that, right? As a creative human being, we have our business and we have a focus, but we are open and intuitive and more stuff just keeps, keeps coming in and we need to figure out how to deal with it. So that's what today's show is about. Um, I just want to introduce everybody quickly. So I've got a little blurb written about each of you because if I get away from what I have written, I will talk forever about each and every one of these ladies here. They are all close personal friends um, and part of my own inner circle and enough on that. So I'm going to just say your name. I'll read a little blurb about you, raise your hand and say hello, and then we'll unmute and get going. Um, so first we have Rachel Archelaus. Rachel, there she is. Uh, Rachel is the founder of the Intuitive Art Academy, where she teaches people how to have a two-way conversation with their intuition. She is an internationally known spiritual teacher and business mentor to life workers. Her book, Intuitive Art, Have a Two-Way Conversation with Your Higher Self, will be out in May. I've had a sneak peek. It's so good. Um, and everybody who's on the panel today, um, I'm going to have their links below in the text or above in the text, depending on where you're viewing this. So just make sure you check them out because as they're talking, they're going to have great ideas. You're going to want to know more about them. You're going to want to hit that link in the text. So next we have Roseanne Jansen. Say hello with that beautiful painting behind her. Roseanne is the no BS psychic for business and she's a creativity and core desire activator. And she's incredible. When we say no BS, not kidding straight to the heart of the matter. Cyndia Carrere, raise your hand, say hello. So Cyndia is the energy stylist for entrepreneurs. She can see, like literally see, <laughs> your energy grid and will help you remove the energetic blocks that you don't want and sculpt and style your grid to match the life and business that you desire. And uh, Jean Berry, Jean's at least at the bottom of my screen. Uh, Jean is a successful creative entrepreneur and creator of this most amazing game that I'm still playing called Angels, Peacocks, and Butterflies. It opens intuitions and opens intuition and gets business owners into action on the most important things. And of course, I'm your host, Carrie Roldan. I am your teammate on this entrepreneurial journey and a body, mind, business alignment coach. And you can learn more about me and what I do. See, I can say my own link because it's my show. Uh, if you go to carryrolledon.com, um, there's an amazing quiz that you need to take. If so, if you go carryrolledon.com forward slash hormone quiz, you can get the quiz to see where you might be out of alignment hormonally. All right, everybody. Um, 
I don't know if you want to unmute yourself now. It's not super noisy, so you can, but let's just dive right into the topic. So I think I will start by asking the question, um, who here has been a victim? <laughs> We're not victims. Uh, who here feels like they could self-identify as someone now or in the past who has had entrepreneurial ADHD or shiny object syndrome? Oh, everyone but Rachel. All right. So, <laughs> so I saw Cynthia's hand go up first. Um, Cynthia, could you just tell us what what that has looked like for you in the past? This this entrepreneurial ADHD. <laughs> well, that's, I love the topic of this uh, show, Carrie, and thank you for inviting me and us. This is a great idea. And what it looks like for me, and I have to totally own it, and it's a little embarrassing, is that it looks like I change. Um, basically my title or how to describe what I do like every week because I'm trying to like nail it and I'll get something that feels really good because it's all about energy and the energy grid and I'll start to use it and, and I'll have a business expert come in and say no 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 you need to use this and I'm thinking oh they're they know what they're doing okay so I'll try that so I'll try that on and and then I'll have another be a business expert pop out and go no 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 you can't use that and so um, I have felt battered by um, not only the ideas, but as soon as I start to utilize them, how quickly experts show up out of the blue to uh, give their opinion. And so for me, um, this shiny object, object syndrome, um, it's finally starting to come to me that the idea that I use or that you use is the core thing. And then all those other ideas become juicy content that you can continue to educate your audience with um, in what you do and the awareness of what happens on the other side. Anybody else have anything for or about Cynthia? Because I don't want to hog all the talking time. You guys are so amazing and valuable. <laughs> Well, Carrie, and, and yes, thank you for having us here. What I discovered is because I'm so many things that it feels like I, I, I should be a, a silo. So when I'm an artist, I'm an artist. And then when I'm, I'm a game inventor, I'm a game inventor. And then when I have these really cool relationship building tools, well, I'm going to go do that. And, and it doesn't feel like it's all one person. It feels like I have to keep juggling around so that, and, and it's just, recently that I've been able to start to pull all those things in. And so it's just me. I'm just one person. Here I am. <laughs> that's so important. And that's something that we've been advised against in as right as this. And this is why we need intuitive folks in our life. Even those of us who are highly intuitive, which everybody here is, and not just highly intuitive, like Cindy can see the energy grid for goodness sake. Rachel and Roseanne have been like psychic for life, for life. I don't know how you do that, for life. Um, <laughs> and Jean has had this whole, I think she still does, has this whole business miracles academy and like lives her life and business through this intuitive way. And yet we all still deal with everything that everybody else deals with, which is why. I love having the panel is because we get wisdom and insight into our own journey and um, into the journeys of each other. So now, Jean, I forgot what you said. Remind me. Oh, too many people. Right? Like that you're, yeah. we, we all are multifaceted. And yet the advice that we get in the business world is pick one thing and stick to it and do not deviate. And that puts a ton of pressure on us, especially those of us who are just starting out figure out what our one thing is and then makes us it, it, how it's manifested for me. And then I'll let um, Roseanne and Rachel talk is that I feel like I've found my thing. I found my thing, uh, but I am multifaceted. And I find if I do too much on one thing, I tire of it. <laughs> like I want a new challenge. I want to create, I want like that thing actually doesn't excite me anymore. And so then I think, well, maybe that wasn't my thing. So then I, I was just telling the panel before we started, I feel like a weeble wobble. So then I so like flip flop and I go somewhere else and I start like looking for my thing again. And then eventually I've been doing this looking for my thing long enough for now I realize what, what Cynthia said, 
it all is sort of around the same, <laughs> like it's around me, it's around all the things that are important to me. Um, but yeah, I'll stop talking there. So Rachel and Roseanne, have you, well, I know Rachel says she hasn't experienced this so much, um, but how did, what does this look like for you? Well, it's been really, really interesting for me um, because um, I've always been psychic, right? So I've always had these things floating in my head and I've been waiting for them to come and for the timing and, and um, to know exactly, to have real clarity on it. And then I started in the online business and I did, I did that, you know, like everybody else must know what's right. So I was doing, trying to do everything that they said and nothing, not one single thing was working. And so finally, like last year, I, I really started um, to put my intuition first. And I, I got this, you know, like we were saying about niching and I'm Canadian, niching. <laughs> uh, um, and I just couldn't do it, you know, like, and then I, I got to start this academy and put all of me in it. And I'm like, oh, yes, that feels so much better. <laughs> you know, like, I don't want to be here and there in parts. And this is me. I'm all of me. And all of me can be in my business. Um, because I, I, I actually believe that, that everything, um, everything we do is one, is one thing. It all works together. So you can't really separate it out effectively. And um, so where else was I going? Clarity. <laughs> um, what happened too was that, you know, like I'd, I'd had this one idea for years and years, and then all of a sudden I had another piece of that come come in, and then all of a sudden, and and it was just sort of you know floating around, the way ideas do, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's one day it's like, okay now do this, and I've learned that I just drop everything and do that because. That, when it, when it comes in that strongly and that definitely and clearly, that's the thing that's going to make the biggest difference in my business, my life, and my clients, and the world, and everything. And sometimes it just scares the, <laughs> everything out of me, <laughs> but I still do it, right? Like, <laughs> Jean <laughs> gave me the courage badge. And um, honestly, you know, like, it doesn't matter how much it scares me, I do it anyway. And... I've learned, you know, like to, it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard to gain that level of trust of yourself when you have people that who are more successful than you financially telling you that you're not right. Um, so the, the best thing for me was getting to know people like you who are going, no, we're actually right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and learning to trust ourselves. Okay, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> well, and I'm going to let Rachel chime in, but I think that I know that was important what you said about getting into action anyway. And if, you're, if your intuition keeps tapping you on the shoulder, right, it's doing it for your highest good. So pay attention and maybe take the time to act on it, even though you don't think you have time or you don't understand why. Um, okay, Rachel, talk to us about... Um, you were the one who didn't raise your hand. So really no ADHD ever? It's not that, I just don't think of it in a negative way. Like I just couldn't raise my hand fully for that because, and I'm sure everyone feels that way. I just, it's not a negative. Like ADHD is a syndrome. I don't think I have a syndrome. I think I'm just open to energy. Like Roseanne's saying, like, I'm not just, I mean, I'm not in business just to make money. And if you are, that's totally cool. That's amazing. But I'm in business to experience myself grow and to experience myself interacting with people and to pull ideas down and to create. And so my objective is not just to like get the fastest path to a million dollars. Like that's not why I'm doing it. So I can ignore happily a lot of what people are saying to do to just make the fastest money. And for me, because I'm not, aligned with that path it wouldn't work for me anyway so even if I tried to do that way it wouldn't work because that's not where my energy is so I think it's amazing to do a lot of different things and nowadays I think you 
it's not a hindrance to do a lot of things because it differentiates you. Like my first product that really started making me money was the Psychic Life and Soul Centered Business Boot Camp. It was about being psychic and being a business because that it can help you if you're kind of like us. And so that's not like a normal offering and that is like two things smashed together but um, it worked for me because that's where my true alignment was so I just continue to do things like that and it's not that I haven't been stressed out about this like it's definitely gotten to me at times I spent all of last year kind of figuring out like should I put two big things that I have right now together and I realized that I could do that without having to combine websites and such. So it's not that I haven't been stressed out. It's not that I haven't beaten myself up about it. I have, but I really don't think fundamentally that it's a bad thing or that it's like a shiny object, you know, affliction. I think we're, we're following our excitement and that's really the important thing. And that's really what works for me. Just like Roseanne was saying. I really like that uh, following your excitement like this. Yeah. And I was muted and saying, okay, thank you. Rachel has this amazing knack for doing that of like distilling a conversation down to the like essential, but that was it, right? That entrepreneurial ADD, right? Those of us who have been diagnosed by some expert, they've said, okay, you really need to focus. You really need like take the drugs, Take the mind numbing drugs. No one's ever said this to me, but it's an analogy here, right? Take your Ritalin so that you're drained of all personality, but you can focus on the one thing. Um, and that's not how any of us want to show up in our businesses. And yet it is, it has been the conventional wisdom for a really long time. But I love what Rachel said about, uh, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't like, and, and I think Cindy, you have some, insight on this. And I know, Jean, you have insight into like the how, how to get into the wise action. Um, all of you actually have, they each have their own methodology for helping uh, people get into action and all of them are amazing. So maybe that will be, we'll do that next. Um, but like, Cindy, you've told me several times your idea about what our business is really for. And if it's, if it's not the quickest path to a million dollars, right? Let's say for me, I would love a million dollars, but that's, that's not my number one reason uh, for wanting to be an entrepreneur. So what do you say about uh, what people's businesses are really for? Well, and it depends on the, you know, the person, but if you're watching this, chances are it may affect you. Um, if you want it just to make the million dollars, you know, there's tons of ways that people can go out there and just make all those, um, real estate deals or go straight to wall street or something. I mean, there's banking, there's tons of ways that if you just want to deal with the money, you can go out and put in the slave hours and you can make money. But for some of us, that doesn't really feel right. There, there needs to be that fulfillment. And, um, we want to have our spirits tickled and to feel happy along the way. And so what I have witnessed many times in myself and other people is that we are called to do what it is that we are, here to heal we have like our own unique puzzle piece that we are here to heal and it starts out looking like we're really good at helping other people so um, this isn't my thing but i witnessed maybe somebody who's a really good um, organizer maybe their house needs another organizer but they have read so many books about it and they have taken so many classes that when it's not their stuff they can be neutral about it and it starts helping other people when they hear oh yeah, I have this pile of papers I need to clear or something. That, that person who has their own cluttered life but understands goes, oh, all you have to do is do da-da-da-da. And they rattle off these tips, right? And the person is amazed. And it looks like they start helping other people. And the more that they start helping other people on that outer surface, the more they can start working on themselves on the inner surface. And so we do show up to teach that which we need to learn. But I think it's so important. And I'm, I'm sure everybody here has said that we're also here to master it, right? It's not just stay in the level of, of learning it, but to literally master. And when we master our own lesson, then we become resolved. And the more we're resolved, the more we have our, our connection and we are here to help other people resolve that. And I don't know, I think that's maybe what you were talking about. Is that what?
You're on mute. You're muted. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a fun show to watch. Um, yes, that's exactly it. I've heard a hundred times people saying, um, you teach what you most need to learn. And I've heard that and absorbed that, but I like what you said, like, no, 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 you have to master it. Right. Cause it's, it's actually, and Roseanne talks about this, like it's, it's your core wound. It's, you need to heal it. Like it's, your business is here for you, um, to grow you, to teach you self love, to teach, right. So much more than just like read some books and then declare yourself an expert. Um, Anybody else want to chime in on that or anything else, or maybe how to get into the next step? I'll go mute for a while without muting myself. Well, I fully believe that our business is um, for our own evolution, uh, especially at um, the, the people like us who are highly intuitive um, and aware of exactly what is happening and um, that we are, you know, we are aware of when we master something and go on to the next. And um, I think too that even though a business may have um, a certain shell, the, a certain look, that um, like there is no reason why it can't change internally as you grow. And um, so, and and I think I think the world needs that too, and your clients need that because. Um, they're looking to you to to help them grow too. So, and you have you you can't really do that unless you are. You, you're taking care of yourself and your own personal growth. So, Jean, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that I agree completely with what Roseanne says about finding that what what you're about, and I think people get stuck in this in the middle circle, which is you know, you, you feel called like, okay, we've been called. Yay. I'm going to go do something great. And you start on this training process and then, um, suddenly say, wait, I'm, I, I'm missing something. And, and that's what's going around in the head. And so, and, and then making a decision of action based upon that missing and, and gets it completely out of kilter. It's like that Weeble thing, right? Because you're out of kilter because you're making a decision out of, um, upset or lack, like I'm not good enough, I, I'm not there. Instead of saying, I am all that, this is what I'm called to do, what's the next thing? And making a decision out of, out of your intuition, out of your calling. And I think that that's really the, the big deal about getting into the right action, is, is just even noticing, where am I? in making this decision? Am I coming from the place of abundance? I'm, I'm already all that. Or am I coming from the place saying, no, I don't have any of that. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's put ourselves in our, um, cause I'm with you. I'm with all of you so far. Like, of course, of course we're all like on the same page. Um, so let's put ourselves in somebody's shoes. So I'm Sally. And I am working really hard on completing my first funnel or completing a second funnel. So I've got this online business. I'm trying to get people to start buying my program. And, um, and yet, I'm still evolving personally. I'm still evolving myself. I'm still, and maybe, I'm not saying this has happened to me, but maybe by the time I get to actually selling my program, because all the time and effort and energy I put into creating it, like I kind of don't even want to. I'm kind of like, Ugh. Um, so how do I determine, I mean, how does Sally determine when, um, what actions are right in what order in her business? So this has been a personal struggle of mine. I know it's a struggle of a lot of entrepreneurs. Like two things I hear a lot is like, one, how do I know how to prioritize these things? Um, when they're all intuitive yeses, right? Like, how do I know how to prioritize when they're all intuitive yeses? And the other thing I hear a lot is, how can I tell when it's an intuitive yes or it's just, um, like, how do I know when it's me or the voice of God or whatever? Like, how do I determine my ego from my intuition? So um, let's start with the um, prioritizing question. And I'll let anybody who wants to answer. 
So I can go for this. Um, you'll find that your energy is in one spot at a time. You're never going to sit down and be in your intuition and be like, oh my God, I have to do this and this and this and this and this. If you're really coming from your intuition or your God space or whatever it is that, you know, your, your alignment, you're going to be excited about doing one thing at a time. And that's where we often feel like we're not doing a good job. Like if you go and you sit down at your desk in the morning and you're like, oh my God, I have this to-do list. I've got to do all these things. I've got to film my funnel video. I've got to do the technical stuff. We've got to write these emails, right? That's like all of our heads all the time. And then you think, oh my God, but what I really want to do is go for a walk. Go for the walk because that's where you're going to get the clarity of what will make a difference for you. Or if you sit down and you're thinking like, you know, I was really supposed to write 20 pages of my book right now. That's on my calendar. I was supposed to do it every day at the same time and build this habit. And you think that's what you need to do. But really, you just want to tinker around with um, the funnel, like the technical stuff of your funnel. Do that. So you're going to feel like doing a certain thing at a certain time. And our biggest hurdle, I think, in business is overcoming self-judgment, right? None of us here, I think, were born knowing how to be an entrepreneur, let alone a successful entrepreneur. So we have to consider a lot of what we do as practice, as education, if we're not making a hundred thousand dollars a year right out of the gate, that's okay. We're learning. We're, we're trial and erroring. We're figuring out what we like, what we don't like, what people are attracted to us for that all takes time. And if you listen to your intuition and you do what you feel like doing and you're gentle with yourself, that's how you're going to find where your priorities are and what's going to work for you. The more gentle you are, the more soft you are, the more receptive you are to your intuition. So that's what I do, and uh, that's what I recommend. Got on mute. I was going to say, anybody else, I can see and hear fear flags raising at what Rachel said, right? Like part of us is going, oh, my God, that sounds amazing. Just do whatever I feel like doing. Um, and there's this other thing that is like, I'll never get anything done. I'll just right like there's the 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 left brain or the social conditioning right or this the entrepreneurial conditioning that says focus 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 you know start and drive at it until you have hit completion. So um, anybody have comments on what Rachel said and maybe how to overcome those those fear flags that are going up? Yeah. Oh, India. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I'm very left brain, right brain. I love strategy and I love intuiting. And so my monkey brain um, needs to have something to do. So I love a piece of paper and a pencil is my friend. So when all those thoughts are swirling, um, I call it a swirlwind <laughs> instead of a whirlwind that all my thoughts are swirling, that I just start writing them down, like just even like bullet points. And that just gives my left brain something to do. And then I can look at it. And then there's kind of that cathartic, like, ah. And what I have to tune into is the ego. You, uh, you guys mentioned the, the ego versus the intuition. The ego, at least for me, is like a little barking dog. It, it's napping at my heels all the time. And it's like, do this, do this, do that. You can't do that, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it's, its intention, I think, is like a sheep dog or something to get me nudged in the right direction. Um, but it's always like, trying to say little, like you didn't do that good enough or fast enough, or you, have, you should have had that done. And that's the sound for me of the ego. And then my spirit is like the most loving person who's on my team that just loves me no matter what. And is like, you know, you could do this and it would feel like this. And it's always a loving, calming, inspiring, feel good hug voice. And so then I can tune in and then um, it's not that the ego or that little nappy ankle biter doesn't have something to say, but when I, I love to create containers. So like, okay, so I know that I have to have a marketing funnel and then what are the pieces of that? So I like the strategy, um, the, the container for it and about finances and about client attraction and all that. So when I have the, the strategy of at least the bullet points, 
then the nap, the, the ankle biter takes a little nap and then the intuition can come in and say, okay, you've created these containers. Now, you know, what feels really juicy and fun to, to start on? And then you get a lot more done. And we say we, I, I think collectively, I don't mean there's like we in here, but um, it's amazing how much can, can get done in a lot quicker once the um, swirl wind has calmed and then the intuition then has a container to come in. You I love that. I love that so much. That idea of um, when I see what I'm seeing is I, I always, you guys know, right. I'm big on like being in physical alignment and when we're in physical alignment and we're but whatever, when we're aligned in general, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, when we're standing in that aligned place, we're like this vessel that the um, energy, the ideas, like all of it is coming through us. And I like Cynthia's idea of like, okay, so I'm sort of like the, the traffic cop or whatever. Like I'm going to send that over into that container and I'm going to move that over there. And this one's going to go straight here. And I like the idea of that as it comes through me as the funnel, I have a place, a container to put those things, um, which then sort of speaks to what Rachel was saying is like, okay, so now I feel inspired to do this. I can like unplug from this. I don't know if unplugging is the right, but like unplug from that, um, certain route and I'm going to plug on over here into that route for a while. Um, I really like that. But what do you have Jean and Roseanne? Like, what are your thoughts on, um, dealing with the most, all the different intuitive nudges that are coming to us? Well, for me, I really like, um, what, what allows it to, to work is if I have a daily practice. And, you know, this was the hardest thing for me because I, I'm an artist. That's where I started. And, you know, there's a reputation that we kind of just flipped all over and do those kind of things. And, and kind of your public expects you to do that, to be a little flaky and not really follow through on anything. And, and the truth is that when I discovered that if I did one little thing each day, that set up my day. And even if it was like Rachel said, like, okay, I've got this huge to-do list, but I'm totally nuts to take a walk. I'm going to go take that walk. Yet it's within the container of saying, of a, of a daily practice that has me really sure and clear and validated that I am on the right path. And it doesn't have to take a ton of time, but it does need to be centering and say, and, and like Cindy says, now we're in the container. Now we can receive. <laughs> and we're in that place where it can actually go. And so, so it was learning that if I would discipline myself for five minutes, like seriously, we need more than that, right? <laughs> but for five minutes a day to, to get in that space so that I could hear my guidance and then do whatever that is and, and attempt not to judge it so much. <laughs> So good. So good. I love you guys. Those of you who don't know me well, so not you guys here, but oh boy, do I love me some discipline. Um, and, and, but you're right. Like the, there is so much power in having a practice and that's what I love. Like, so one of my practices that I've adopted recently is playing Jean's game, which is this, it's a container around an intuitive practice. And the beauty is even if you don't, even if you're not as intuitive as us, right? Even if you don't see yourself as someone who's, you know, psychic or highly intuitive or able to like really hear um, the voices of your guide. So maybe this is answering my second question is Jean's game actually provides a framework and helps you over time see the messages that are coming to you, even though they don't seem to make sense. Um, anyways, I'll leave it there. I'll put a link somewhere below but she's got a beautiful practice, like a five minute a day practice that you can do. And for me, it was the discipline actually had to come from um, understanding that my practice was physical. Yes, oh, <laughs> Rachel has Jean's game. Hold it up again, Rachel. It's the greatest. Um, I'll put a link, we all need it, it's so good. Um, but for me, it was realizing like, I was trying to cram too many practices in because I was listening to too many people instead of my intuition. Like I was, damn it, I'm gonna meditate every day and I'm gonna journal every day and I'm gonna, I was spending like hours of every day on these practices 
but I was just kind of going through the motions of them instead of exactly what you said, Jean, like getting centered, getting clear, div- like getting disciplined about, no, for these five minutes, I'm going to be here and now. Um, yeah, so that was really valuable. valuable. Roseanne, what do you have? Well, I'm, I'm much like Cindy. I have this whole control thing going and um, wanting everything to be organized and set and, and uh, defined and clear. Um, and then that wild like, oh, no, let's just do everything. <laughs> um, and let's just be totally open and intuitive. So what I do is um, I, I'm not quite as um, organized as Cindy, but I have paper everywhere. I have papers. I'm the queen of sticky notes. They're everywhere in my house. And wherever I am, if I have an idea, I write it down. And then at the end of the week, I go through them and organize them. Um, But just so, because like creative people, we have so many ideas. And you don't, they're not all for right now, but you want to keep them. So you have to have some sort of system, whatever, to, 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 track them and you know to see what you want to keep and what you don't um and so i so i have all these lists and these to-do lists and um that's what i'll start my day with with if i don't have an intuitive nudge i'll just i've got a list of things to do so i'm i'm not lost you know i i can work on my business and then as soon as intuition hits like that you know like do this right now I'll just drop everything and do that right now, no matter what. Um, well, unless I'm talking to a client. <laughs> <But> <laughs> don't want to drop that. <laughs> but um, yeah, and so if there's a really big thing that I need to do, like working on my book, and if I'm having these other intuitive nudges during the day and my, my ego is going, you know, <gasps> you're not going to get it done, you know, and then I'm just like, no, that's okay. We'll do that for an hour tonight. And then I can, I just relax, you know, like it's got a set time. And the other thing I've really learned now is to not beat myself up if I can't make myself do something, um, which I, I was doing for a long, long time. But what I finally, I mean, I, I knew it because I could see the process happening over and over, but I was still freaking out about it. Um, was that if I can't make myself do it, it's because it's not time to do it. There's another piece of information or another person that's going to come in or another idea that's going to show up at the right time. And when that comes, I'll know it and I'll get that. Okay, now, do it now. And so it's just this huge trust thing that has to happen. Um, and the other thing, <laughs> I do I do something from all of you. Um, Cindy's contracts, which just helps me <laughs> tremendously. Rachel's intuitive art um, to to keep me on track. Um, once a week, for sure, you know, the, to set my week. And if I have other questions in between. And uh, Jean's game, I do it every day. And it was amazing, Jean, like even some... Some of the cards or some of the, the to do the result activities, um, I'm like, I don't know how to do that. You know, how am I, where am I going to do that? What am I going to do? And then, so I'll just set it aside. And then like one that was from two days ago, all of a sudden today, it was like the perfect place to do that showed up. And I'm like, yeah, that's it. So you're trusting your intuition that, even something like that, that's intuitive, that you don't have to beat yourself up about not doing it <laughs> because the time will come. And, and you'll know, you'll recognize it. And, um, and also my own life cards, which um, I <laughs> pull them all the time, and especially once a week and once a month for guidance. And, um, and carries, um, you know, the alignment, the physical alignment, which I have struggled with. Um, and that's just, it's, I, I've, I've sort of, you know, always lived in my head. And like Cindy, one time you said that if Carrie didn't hold you by the feet, you'd just float off. Well, I feel the same way, you know, like I would just, I would just live in that world, right? Um, but recognizing the importance of the body being 
our tool for creativity here. So you have to, you have to care for it. Okay, that's it. <laughs> no, so good, so good. Like, this is what I was hoping from this show was to, to sort of show people like this, you guys are some like intuitive super ladies, super powers. Like, I mean, it's funny, right? Because this, so this, I've been in relationship with these women for a couple of years and um, for a long time, they're like, Carrie, you already know, you've got the, like, you know, I'll help you know. But um, anyways, all this to be said is you guys all, the thing that I love is that like, you're psychic. You can see energy. You're helping people create miracles. You like can do a drawing and understand what that says. Like that's, I mean, there's some cool, magical superpower shit happening on this panel. And yet, <laughs> turns out it's not that different than anybody who doesn't know they have that. And this is what Roseanne just said is so important because I've been living in all your worlds for a while and I've been doing all your practices while sort of figuring out my own. And now I feel like I'm getting it. I get one. I trust my own intuition. Just like, um, I think Roseanne said like this year really going, okay, I got this. I don't need, I love interviewing experts. Right. But, um, but I got this. Like, my guidance isn't going to lead me astray. It's just not. And so if it doesn't make sense to the marketing expert or my current coach or like whoever, if it doesn't make sense to them, that's okay. I might need to do some intuitive art and ask some good questions. I might need to have a session with one of you guys to like get a little bit more clarity. I might have to, there might still be a little bit more work I need to do around that. Um, and that's why having an intuitive guide is so great because you guys are so wonderful at asking the right questions or just like, just how we help each other in that, like, just sort of say, as you were talking, this is what I was getting, you know, like providing that perspective. It's so beautiful to have someone else with a highly intuitive perspective. But I think the overarching theme, like, I think the answer to the big question today is um, trust yourself. Trust that your intuition isn't trying to lead you in the wrong way and use some tools that you have available to you. Um, so did you guys got some wrap up around that? Maybe want to talk about, um, because I haven't really done, I haven't done you justice in terms of describing exactly what each of you do. Um, maybe talk about the, the tool, the one tool that, or one of the tools that you help people use. Um, Quickly, before we head off, I just feel like I would like to sort of do a round robin real quick um, on that. So I'll start, and then I'll go to Cynthia. Um, so my tool that I help people use, right, is to get into physical alignment, right? To, so that means alignment on the cellular level, and it usually means getting your hormones in check. And when we do that, it's not so – so I have a program called the Body, Mind, Business Reboot, but it's not um, – the reason like people do it because they want to lose weight and they want to heal their hormonal symptoms and all that happens. But the reason I'm so excited about it is because when you get into, when you remove the internal clutter, um, you are a clearer vessel to receive that intuition. You're at home in your body again. Um, you, your systems are functioning in the way that they're meant to function. And that information that we were talking about that comes through you, right? It has a clearer path to go through. So you are more aligned. You are more clear. So that's, that is a methodology that I use. Uh, Cynthia, what do you use to help people uh, get into alignment and get out of their own way? Well, first, I just want to uh, comment, if I may, on your program. I was so resistant when I first heard about it. I was like, I don't want to give up any of the stuff. And I am so glad that my intuition guided me to take your course because I have lost 15 pounds on it. And I have stuck um, as of uh, in about three days or something, it will be completely six months and have not gone off at it all. And I'm loving it and yeah, stuck with it. And my husband's lost 20 pounds and we're so much happier. And it, it's even more, it's exactly what you say. It's even more clear. Um, and I have just a little bit different story from say Rosanna Rachel. Um, I did come into this world intuitive, but my parents right away that when they saw that, um, I had to create, a, uh, I created a contract with them. My mother actually made me promise and almost vow. Um, I will say it's right in between a promise and a vow that I would never, ever use my intuitive gifts and abilities. 
So I had to shut mine down for a long time until I understood that. It wasn't until I was 33, um, what somebody dubbed, oh, it's your Jesus year, um, that I had to renegotiate that promise with my mother. And it wasn't until I could unwrap that that then I stepped in. So I was an adult. So for any of you out there who have had it or don't know how, mine had to go underground for a long time. And so when I came back into it at age 33, then I had to go on a journey of actually developing that trust with it and rebuilding it. Um, because that fear that I had around little kid that I would do something wrong if I did it um, really impacted it. So um, then a few years ago, I was given a sacred vision um, about the energy grid. And that's how I, I do it now. I was just like downloaded with a like a computer program that I understand people's grids and how it's all connected. And I can actually get in there and help people pull the gunk out and uh, help them fill in the missing holes. And, and you know, if you have an intolerable ache, that's probably um, a hole in your grid. So that's how I help people really get in touch and in tune with their own energy system, their own energy grid, and to build that sacred trust with themselves and the divine. I was muted, but I will go on and on about your work, all of you, if I'm not careful. So um, I'm actually just going to go straight to Rachel and just say, you guys, you must know, you must know energy work is so important. That's why you're watching this. Um, all of these women are so amazing. And Rachel, talk to us about um, your specific methodology, how you help people. Yeah, so most people... Um, you know, are intuitive, they understand, they get intuition, but they don't trust it enough to really follow through. And so I developed this thing called intuitive art, which allows you to close your eyes, do a little scribble on a piece of paper after asking your higher self, your intuition, a question, and then being able to look at the drawing and get the answer. It's much, much easier than it sounds. You can learn the whole thing for free in less than an hour. Um, I'm sure Carrie will have the link for you for the free class, but um, I use it for everything. So I get my business strategy from Intuitive Art. I, I know where my energy is and what projects to focus on, get my priorities. And it's a really good way to get in touch with your higher power, whatever you call it, and get clear information outside of your head so that you're not doubting it. And um, yeah, that's what I do. And it's awesome, and it's a good method. Um, and Jean, I'm gonna go to you next. And Rachel's absolutely right. I will have everybody's links, so don't worry about it. Uh, but Jean, talk to us about how you help people get in touch with their intuition. Well, these ladies actually have done a lovely job of sharing the games that I developed. But you know, same, same thing with Cynthia. I did not recognize, uh, recognize myself as psychic or intuitive or any of those things for my whole life. Um, I was even older than Cindy was when she started and um, then had to find tools that really helped me to both develop my intuition and trust it because I didn't see that I had any of those gifts at all. And I know that everyone can develop it. And it's, it's a matter of finding a, a way that's easy and fun because then you'll do it. And um, and so I, I love Rachel's intuitive art process. Oh, that's yummy. <laughs> and I love energy healing. I love creative processes that Roseanne's going to talk about. Like all those things get you more in touch. And I just came up with a sweet little thing in a game <laughs> um, to, to make it easy and fun um, to develop it and start to really trust it to get into action. So I'm, I'm thrilled to. And, and then the last thing is that I also discovered that when you actually get help, I always thought that coaches put that out there so that they would sell more coaching packages. <laughs> and yet, when I finally decided to hire a coach who was highly intuitive and to help me really be okay about that, that's when it really blossomed and really worked. So, yeah. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> so that's, that's any and all of us. Pick your coach. We're here for you. <laughs> Um, and Roseanne, talk to us about your methodology. Well, um, I have a, a, a unique way of seeing people. And um, 
it just kind of happened one day. Um, and uh, so I, I asked, I, I finally, well, I should actually back up here. Like I've always talked to God or source or whatever, but then, you know, eventually I thought that maybe I should listen. And so when I thought to listen <laughs> for answers, and, and then I realized that it was, it was a two-way conversation. And the more I could hear and see and know and everything. And, um, and then I, I finally figured out that I could ask for certain abilities. And so I asked um, to see people's divine self. And so that I can see. I can see and, and then I just keep asking questions, you know, curiosity, which is the base of me is curiosity. Um, what 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 is their purpose? What does the colors mean? What does the um, what does the shapes mean? What is this? What is that? And uh, that tells me their purpose and their their strengths, their weaknesses, and all kinds of things about them. Um, so that's that's where I start uh, with people is being able to tell them all that information about themselves that we all kind of know this. So, you know, we we know it already, but we don't know it and we doubt it, and um, we may have these, these wonderful desires, but then we also have these hurts that are in the way, and, um, and we doubt that, that our dreams are real because we're living this little tiny life and, you know, doing the dishes and cleaning the bathrooms and, you know, going to work, and how is that ever going to happen? You know, it's, it's just so far out there. But... I can see that for, for people and I can tell them that they have the capacity to do that. And uh, so validate them from inside. And then once people have that validation and that trust in themselves, then I can help them align their business with that. You know, most of my clients already have a business, so um, they just need to know how to sort of tweak it and turn it and add and subtract to make it align fully with their their um, purpose <laughs> so you guys all need to know those of you who watch the show and especially these ladies you, you know every time there's like something strong energetically happen I yawn and I've been like yawning out my ears for the past like 20 minutes as each of you have been talking um, that was just so powerful you guys like I, I, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you for being here for doing the work that you do. And Roseanne just hit a, on something so important because, well, one, I need to I need to out myself. So this just happened actually this week. Um, I was in, Rachel has a class called um, Psychic Lifestyle. And I just took Rachel's Psychic Lifestyle class. And at the very end, I realized, oh my God, I'm not crazy. I'm psychic. Like all this, it was like this, this like, I'm not crazy. I'm psychic, all these things, right? And it, it was this most beautiful moment, and all of you here have been telling me this for a long time, but it was this beautiful moment where I realized, like, these, the more I've trusted these things that, like, at the time, I didn't want to say, because for me, it often happens in conversation. I'm able to hear what people aren't saying. And so, um, you know, I think, like, but I didn't, they didn't, did they say that? Or edit? And I would just second guess myself and not want to be rude, but over these past several years and knowing and working with all of you, I really come to trust that. And it serves me every single time. And I think that's the point of this whole show is to recognize sometimes you need help. Sometimes you need guidance on your own intuitive journey. Sometimes you need the perspective of an outside person who is like all of us here, who are open, who are psychic slash intuitive, whatever you want to call it, right? Who are listening at all times who are keeping themselves clear vessels to receive that guidance um, and who have your highest and best interest in in mind always right i think that's um sometimes when we can get working with and i didn't know this code this show was going to go this way and we do have to wrap up um but sometimes when we're working with an expert um there is a need for them to keep you inside their lines, right? In order for you to become one of their success stories, you need to do things their way. And um, everybody here is of the mind that for you to be a success story, you need to do things your way. So let's help you find your way. And everybody here offers a tool or a service or, or um, something, right? 
to help you find your way. So um, I think maybe this is a good place to end the show. So ladies, Intuitive Super Panel. This was so fun. I wanna do it again and again and again. So I'm just going to make this a regular feature. I realize you all have busy lives. It may not be all five of you or all five of us uh, every last week of the month, but um, I'm gonna set the intention for holding an Intuitive Super Panel for the last week of every month. So that leaves um, everybody here and everybody watching. If you've got a burning question, if you've got a desire, if you've got something that you would like a little uh, psychic advice on, I've got a whole intuitive super panel right here. So um, if you are getting this in email, you can reply. If you're seeing it on Facebook, like basically wherever you're seeing this, on YouTube, on Facebook, in email, on a blog post, leave a comment with your burning questions and we will compile those and use them for future shows. So uh, ladies, why don't you just all unmute yourself so that we can just um, give everybody a great big virtual hug and say thank you so much everybody for being here. Thank you panel, thank you viewers. Um, just love you all so much. And um, I wanna thank each and every one of you personally. So thank you, Cynthia, thank you, Rachel, thank you, Roseanne, thank you, James. Thank, thank you, Carrie. You, Carrie. <laughs> thank thank you. you. You're welcome, I love you fun. all. It was fun. Yes, it was so fun. We'll do it again. All right. So uh, from my heart to yours, have a fabulous rest of your day. Be intuitive in your business. And I'll see you on the next episode of The Carrie Well Done Show. <laughs>